All right, hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to be talking about Wick's theorem in quantum field theory. Wick's theorem is a very interesting theorem. It has to do with combinatorics, and it's a way of uh, stating that the time contraction of a, f uh, a field is... Uh, it's a generalization of stating the difference between the time contraction and the normal, or the time ordering and the normal ordering of a field. So, uh, with that being said, let's let's get into the, let's get into the topic here. So, Wick's theorem states that for any given number of operators, the contraction of any number of operators given by the difference between the time ordered and the normal ordered product. Okay, what does this mean? This means for two operators, the time ordered product. Oops. Uh, undo the time ordered product minus the or minus the normal ordered product is this is equal to the contraction of of their of their product. I just we write it this way uh, because that's kind of what the book does, right? You, we don't have to write it this way, but that's how it goes. So for three operators. What does this mean? This means that, again, the difference between the time-ordered product and the normal-ordered product is equal to the contraction. But for three operators, we need to do a little bit more combinatorics here, right? Because um, we have a contraction. A contraction can only exist between two fields. Because remember, we define the contraction in terms of um, a commutation relationship. And we can only have a commutation relationship between two fields. So we can contract these two at a uh, field at one particular location and the field at this particular location. Right? The ones and the twos don't refer to components of, of um, some spatial vector. They don't refer to that. In this case, they refer to different locations in space. We can contract this field at location one and location three, uh, we can contract the, uh, or we can tr contract at two and three. Okay. So what about for four operators? Uh, let's take a look here. So here's our time component. Here's our normal component. The way I like to do this is to draw myself a little picture, right? So we have uh, x1, x2, x3, and x4. Well, we can contract 1 and 2. Okay, there's 1 and 2. We can contract 1 and 3. So here's 1 and 3. We can contract 1 and 4. So here's 1 and 4. So those are the black contractions. The ones I have labeled in red are the red contractions here. So that's between 2 and 3. So between location two and location three, and between location two and four, so two and four. Okay. And then there's one other contraction here, which is the blue one, which is between three and four. So we've completed all possible uh, single contractions with all the others being left over. So how many is that? That's n times n minus 1 over 2. This is something you can actually derive uh, just by looking at pictures like this for a while. So n, where n is the number of vertices, essentially. Uh, so we can, say, we can do this calculation here. So if we have four vertices, it would be 4 times 3 divided by 2. Right, so that is going to be 2 times 3, which is 6. How many connections do we have or contractions do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And it works out. And you can do this for other, you can do this for other um, geometric shapes also. So now, we, what's left to contract is um, two fields. Oop. Uh, so two and two, right? So we have, uh, we can do this contraction and this contraction. 
we can do these contractions and we can do these contractions. So we don't want to leave these guys behind because they're le legitimate contractions. And so when we do that, we have n minus 1 possibilities, right? Because once we've picked 1, then the only other ones we could pick are contractions between um, uh, the, other, the other options, right? So these are the options that I've laid out here. There's only three of them, right? Given four locations in space-time, the contractions we can make are three. Okay. So this is Wick's theorem, right? Wick's theorem essentially states that there's a difference between the time-ordered uh, product and the normal ordered product of a field at different locations in space and time. And the, the difference between the two is equal to the contraction of the two. Right? So and we sort of mathematically showed that. We've showed that the, um, we can take a field and split it and split it up according to its creation and annihilation operators. And we could take a field and split it up according to its space-time points. And when we do that splitting up and ordering, we take the difference between those two split-ups, essentially. We're contracting. So we're splitting up and contract, and we're splitting up, taking the difference. That's what's called the contracting. So in terms of two fields that are not contracted... That are, so, ter so terms of two fields that are not contracted will go to zero because they need to be normal ordered to ensure uh, that this is indeed true, that there's no contribution uh, from going from one state to the same exact state, essentially. So what does that mean? That means so all the fields that are not contracted, that means these fields are not contracted this two and four fields are not contracted. Uh, fields at location two and three here are not contracted. Uh, fields that are not contracted here is the location one, location four. Uh, here's at location one and three, and one and two. All right, so all of these guys, so this whole picture, right, these are all the contractions that are going to go to zero. Okay? And we're left at the contractions that are not um, that don't have anything uh, left to normal order. And so, because we found that normal ordering gives us this result. So what we're left with is a time ordering of four fields in which this is equal to all this. And what we found out is that the contraction is equal to the commutator, and the commutator we found is the same thing as a propagator. And so the propagator, again, is uh, what we defined as this D function, right? This D function, this Feynman propagator uh, between two space-time points, Feynman propagator between these two space-time points, and I'm realizing right now there needs to be an F here. This just means Feynman, right? Feynman came up with the idea of this of the propagator essentially, and um, the that's what these that's what these guys are, right? So these are Feynman propagators. Uh, they encompass uh, how one goes about going from point A in a space time point to point B in a space time point, and there's an exponential in the integral. All, on all that kind of stuff. So we have um, this. So what we have essentially is when we we can bring out the bra and the ket vectors. Those all go to one, right? Because that's an inner product between the same states. And when we get this, we get that the time, um, the the time ordering of four of the of not four fields, but the field at four separate points in space time. Uh, the time ordering of all of those is equal to all of this. Okay, so what we found is that essentially for Wick's theorem, we're able to get something that looks like the product of different um, the the product of different uh, propagators. So pictorially, pictorially this is interesting, right? Pictorially, this means if we were to draw a picture, uh, say. I'm going to say I'll draw a picture. Oops. 
say I have this geometric picture. We have, I have x1, x2, x3, and x4. df, so from 1 to 2 and from 3 to 4. All right, so from 1 to 2 and from 3 to 4. Okay. You can see what's going on here. From 1 to 3 and from 2 to 4. Okay. From 1 to 4. 1 to 4 and 2 to 3. All right, so I'll just underline these in the colors I'm using. So 1 to 4 and 2 to 3. What is interesting about this picture? Let's zoom in on this picture here. We have convergence at this point here, I'm going to use a different color actually. I'm going to use brown. We have convergence at this point. We have some convergence. We have complete divergence at this point. So I'll do divergence in a different color. Complete divergence at this point. And then these two points here, uh, I'll do dark green is a mix between convergence and divergence. Right, so we have two arrows converging, one arrow diverging. Here we have two arrows diverging, one arrow converging. These are all the possible paths. These are all the possible paths to go from uh, given four points in space-time, and we're going from essentially one to four, these are all the possible paths that go, be, that go between, that go from one to four. All right, so one's complete, uh, complete divergence, complete convergence here. So we know that the, the beginning point is here, the end point is here. We have a dynamical property, propagator that'll take us here, we can then have a dynamical propagator that takes us here. And then we have a propagator that takes us here. We have a propagator that takes us here and then here. And then we can do, say, from here to here. But we can see whenever we follow the arrows, they always take us to four. And so that is this picture here this picture here is uh, sort of defines, this picture here sort of defines how we can make sense of these dynamical propagators. And we can begin to think, okay, what about five points in space-time? What do five points in space-time look like? Well, we can draw, say, let's do six points, actually. Here's six points. This might be fun to do, right? So we have, say, let's label our points. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And we're going from one to six. So we can do those. We can do those. Um, I'm not going to, I'm like 15 minutes into this video already, but you can sort of get the point. We can go from, say, like this, and I think what I should have done here, here, I will actually do...
you can see this gets a little bit complicated because we have to know what what exactly where exactly the air, the direction of the arrows are going but we can sort of turn this into a geometric picture i'm not going to actually do it for six points i think it'll take too long um, but the point here is that we can think of this geometrically or we can think of this um and uh, look like this also and uh, with that being said that's Wick's theorem Wick's theorem again states that give, we, we've sort of covered this already um, but I want to go through it one more time uh, the contraction of any number of operators is given by the difference between the time ordered and the normal ordered product so when we're contracting a field at two points we are normal ordering the two points and we're time ordering the operators. The difference between those is the contraction, essentially. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed this content and I'll see you guys in the next one.